Hello, beautiful souls. This is Dr. Destiny, and today I am going to conclude the in-depth study of the water-soluble vitamins, and this will be part four, and this is the conclusion. So, welcome to my YouTube channel, Dr. My YouTube channel, Destiny Forever Walks PhD. I am a doctor of philosophy a holistic health coach and nutrition coach, and I teach a holistic health and healing. I teach this on the whole man, which is the mind, the body, and the soul. So I'm gonna conclude this now. The other three parts of this video, I try my best to keep them under 15 minutes, and I think I did quite well. But today in the conclusion, it's gonna be a little bit longer because I wanna get all this information that's left into this video, into this series, so we can complete that. So come on in, sit with me, and let's learn more. Let's learn some more about these water-soluble vitamins, the last three. Now, I broke these, uh, this series into sections because it was very long. The first part, I did three of the water-soluble vitamins because there are eight. Now, there's eight B vitamins in the B complex group. And then you have your water, uh, then you have your vitamin C, which makes up nine water soluble vitamins. So first I did the B group, which I did the first uh, part I did, vitamin B1, vitamin B2, and vitamin B3. I went on into part two and I did five and vitamin B6 and vitamin B7. Today is the conclusion, which is the last three, which makes up the whole nine, and will be vitamin B9, vitamin B12, and your vitamin C. Let's get started, because you gotta go back, because I'm not gonna go repeat all the information, because I don't want this too long, because it's gonna be longer than 15 minutes. So go back to part one, part two, and part three, and you catch up all what we are doing, and I'm gonna drop a lot of information in the com in the um, description box so you can know exactly where we are. So welcome again, beautiful souls, I am back, and let's get started with this video today, okay? So today we're gonna to conclude on the last of the three water-soluble vitamins. We're gonna start with vitamin B9, which is your folate, or your folic acid. So what is folate? And I have notes, I um, will be looking down. Folate is, like I said, it's known as your folic acid and it aids in protein metabolism, promoting your red blood cells and your red blood cell formation. Also lowering the risk for neural tuber defects and Folate also may play a role in controlling your hemosystemic levels, thus reducing the risk for coronary heart disease. Now, these are some of the foods that you can get your vitamin B9 from. Those sources include like the organ uh, meats like liver and kidney. Also, your dark green vegetables, meats, legumes, fish, whole grains, and fortified grains, as well as cereals. So how much folate? Well, according to the recommended dietary allowance, we should be getting about 400 mcgs of folate per day for both adult males as well as the females. Now, Pregnancy will increase the RDA for your folate intake. And this will be like 600 MCGs a day. Is there a folate deficiency? Okay, a folate deficiency affects cell growth and protein, protein production which can lead to an overall impaired growth. Now, there may be anemia in the primary clinical sign of folate deficiency. And it includes symptoms such as like being fatigued, headaches, 
heart palpitation. So that's something that you need to pay attention. Don't necessarily say that you may have a folic deficiency, but it could mean that, you know, there's something wrong in your body. You need to pay attention when your body sends you signals. But a folate deficiency in women who are pregnant or of childbearing age may result in the delivery of a baby with neural two defects. And that is something what they call spinal bifida, okay? So, what is too much folate? Well, an overconsumption of folate offers no or no known benefits and may mask the B12 deficiency as well as interfere with some of your medications. And for this reason, the Food and the Nutrition Board is established an upper limit for folate for supplements and fortified foods of 1,000 mcg per day. So that concludes that, the, the vitamin B9. Now let's go into your last group of the B12 or the B vitamins. This is the last part of, this is the vitamin B12, which is your cobalamin, your cobalamin. Now then, what is cobalamin? It aids in building the genetic material and the production of normal red blood cells and maintenance of your nervous system and that is something people i'm telling you we especially the vegans out there you definitely gonna need some type of supplementation for vitamin b12 because vegans you know they don't eat meat so any other diets that don't eat meat within their diet you got to get that b12 from a supplementation some other supplementation of vitamin B12, okay, to get that. Now, what food sources can we get vitamin B12 from? Now, vitamin B12 is found naturally in foods of animals' origin, such as, I said, your meats, your organ meats like your liver, your kidney. Also, you can get it out of fish, eggs your milk products, you know, butters and eggs and things of that nature, oysters and shells, seashells, all the shellfish. And some fortified foods such as your uh, breakfast cereals and nutritional yeast, it may also contain your vitamin B12, which the people that don't eat meat need to check that out because you need to get vitamin B12 in your diet. So how much vitamin B12 is recommended by the uh, dietary allowance? Now for vitamin B12, it is 2.4 mcgs per day for both adult males and females. Now many adults over the age of 50, they do not get enough of vitamin B12. And the dietary guidelines, it recommend consuming foods fortified with the vitamin B12, such as your fortified cereals. Now for that place, like I said, if you're not, if you're not eating meats, your best way to get your vitamin B12 will be through a supplementation. And I recommend all the time not to take it in a pill form or a gummy. You need it in a B12 shot. And if you don't do the shot, then the next best way is to get it through a vitamin B12 liquid form because it soars quickly into the body and it goes to work and it breaks down everything in your body so it can work properly, okay? Also, is there a vitamin B12 deficiency? Well, vitamin B12 deficiency commonly affects, as I said, those of vegans or those diets that do not eat meats or any dairy products. Infants of vegan mothers, they are commonly affected, and the elderly, they are commonly affected by, you know, deficiency if they don't get the vitamin B12. Symptoms of deficiency include anemia, neurological changes such as numbness in your body or your hands or whatever your feet, whatever, legs, tingling your hands, I said, and your feet, as I said before. 
But in order to prevent your vitamin B12 deficiency, I told you that you need a dietary supplement and it has to be taken to make sure that you're getting what you need with the vitamin B12 because that is an important vitamin in your uh, diet every day. Now, some people develop, like I said, a vitamin deficiency because they cannot absorb the vitamin the vitamin, the B12, like I said, the pill form, they cannot absorb it through the stum stomach lining. That's why I was saying that this can be treated through taking a vitamin B12 injections or getting it through the liquid form. Is there too much of a vitamin B12? No problems because there is no overconsumption that has been known by um, taking your vitamin B12 supplements. So, that will be no problem with overconsumption, okay, when it comes to your vitamin B12. Now the last of the water-soluble vitamins, because I'm talking about the in-depth study of the water-soluble vitamins, and we went through all that, part one, part two, part three, and today we are concluding with part four of this series, talking about the water-soluble vitamins. There is eight water-soluble vitamins in your B vitamin group. And then there is still vitamin C. So we already now have gone over all eight of the B complex group of your water soluble vitamins. And the last on this list will be your vitamin C. Vitamin C is in that group of water soluble vitamins. So let's get this information to you. Your vitamin C is known as ascorbic acid. Well, what is your vitamin C? The vitamin is something your vitamin C is what your body needs to to remain in proper working condition. Vitamin C benefits the body by holding the cells together through collagen synthesis. And collagen is a connected tissue that holds your muscles, your bones and your other tissues together. Your vitamin C also aids in wound healing. It aids in bone and teeth formation, strengthen your blood vessel walls, improving your immune system, because vitamin C, it does, is very, very significant, very important in improving your immune system functions. Also increasing absorption and utilization of iron, which your body do need that iron, and acting also as an antioxidant. Also, your vitamin C, it works with vitamin E as an antioxidant, and it plays a very crucial role in neutralizing free radicals throughout the body. Now, through its antioxidant activity, studies suggest that vitamin C may help prevent or delay the development of certain cancers, heart disease, and other diseases in which oxidative stress plays a crucial role. Now, what food sources can we get vitamin C from? I know you heard all your life it's, uh, when you're a little kid, mama, all oh, daddy always said, you gotta get that vitamin C because you got a cold, get those oranges, oranges, but there's some other food sources. Your vitamin C, you can get those from food sources like many, many fruits and vegetables because all of those contain that significant vitamin C. It contains that and the best sources are citric fruits, peppers because of the capsaicin seeds in them, your kiwi, your strawberries, and even broccoli. That's, that's where you're going to get a lot of your vitamin C. Your most significant a part of getting that vitamin C will be in these types of foods. For example, let me tell you, one orange, one kiwi, six ounce, a three-fourth cup of grapefruit juice, or even one-third cup of chopped sweet red pepper, each of these supply enough vitamin C for one day. Now, that is amazing. Go and find that recipe. Use that recipe. I'm going to repeat that. Your vitamin C is so significant for your body. And you want to make sure you're getting the, the adequate amount of vitamin C. And the best source of vitamin C are 
from your citrus fruits, peppers, quinoa, strawberries, and broccoli. And I gave you an example. One orange, one kiwi, six ounce, three fourth cup of grapefruit juice, or one third cup of chopped sweet red peppers. Each one of these supply enough vitamin C for one day. So how much vitamin C is recommended by the dietary allowance? Well, vitamin C is the recommended, the recommended requirement will be 90 milligrams a day for both adults as well as your females. And 75%, well, let me repeat that again. Your vitamin C recommend or uh, allowance is 90 milligrams a day for the adult male. That, that is my correction, but it's only 75% milligrams for the adult females. And for those who smoke cigarettes, the REDA for vitamin C increases by 35 milligrams a day in order to counteract with the oxidative effects of the nicotine in the cigarettes. Vitamin C recommendation also increase during their pregnancy and lactation. Okay, is there a vitamin D deficient that is known? Well, although it's very rare in the United States, but severe vitamin C deficient may result in the disease known as scurvy. That's a disease called scurvy. Causing fatigue and loss of collagen strength throughout your body. Loss of collagen results in it, like loose teeth or you losing a tooth in your mouth, bleeding and swollen gums, and improper wound healing. So that's something I said. Pay attention to your body. The body's gonna give you sickness. Things gonna show up in your body. Things gonna show up that's gonna that's gonna interfere with your whole and healthy being, your whole healthy state of being. So pay attention. Like I said, this is very significant. And let me give you the last thing I wanna say. The falling conditions have been shown to increase vitamin C requirements. And this is something I want you to pay attention. The falling conditions have been shown to increase vitamin C requirements. And they are, one, environmental stress such as air and noise pollution. Two, tissue healing of wounds. Number three, growth. Children from zero to 12 months and pregnant women. Number four, fever and infection. And the fifth one is smoking. Now these are the following conditions that have been shown to increase vitamin C requirements. If there's too much vitamin C, Despite being a water-soluble vitamin that the body excretes when in excess, vitamin C overdoses and increase the risk of adverse health effects like your kidney stones, diarrhea, rebound of scurvy in the body, and increased oxidative damage. And for this reason, that's why the Food and Nutrition Board has established an upper limit of 2,000 milligrams a day. Now, the last thing I want to talk to you about, because people always hear vitamin C is for your colds, it's for your colds, you got to get that vitamin C in your body, eat those oranges, eat those new citrus fruits. Can vitamin C prevent or treat the common cold? This is the last of your water-soluble vitamins nine water soluble vitamins and the last one I'm talking on now concluding this series is your vitamin C. Can vitamin C prevent or treat the common cold? The controversial overusing megal doses of vitamin C to prevent or to treat the common cold and other infections it remains a very popular topic still as today. Vitamin C appears to have the ability, though, to enhance various immune cell functions. However, the, pre the precise dose and the ideal timing of vitamin C intake has been fully 
elucidated. And the overall, the evidence suggests that the adequate dietary vitamin C intake and possibly higher intake of at plasma saturating levels of 100 to 200 milligrams per day. It may help people. It may help the common cold by optimizing the cell and the cell tissues in their body, your tissue cells as well. So, regular intake of doses of 100 to 1,000 milligrams a day may be especially helpful in reducing those coincidences in people exposed to extreme physical exercise. Wow. And I think I need to repeat that because I want to make sure y'all get this right. <laughs> Excuse me. Let's go back and let's do this over again because I want to make sure you get this. The overall, the evidence suggests that adequate dietary vitamin C intake and possibly higher intake at plasma saturating levels, 100 to 200 milligrams a day, it may help prevent the common cold by optimizing cell and tissue levels. The regular intake of doses of 200 to 1,000 milligrams per day may be especially helpful in reducing cold incidents in people exposed to extreme physical exercise or even the cold environment and those with marginal vitamin C status, such as the elderly, as well as those chronic smokers. Now, among the general population, though, the vitamin C intake at doses of 200 milligrams a day or more is moderately effective in proving the severity and the duration of the common cold. Now, in terms of treatment of established infections, some evidence indicated significantly higher doses and grams it may be beneficial in the recovery process by ameliorating the decline in leukocyte, which is your vitamin C levels. And but however, though, research still needs to address safety concerns in taking overdoses of vitamin C to make sure that you're getting the proper amount that you need for your body without causing more effect in your body. Now furthermore, this effect appears to have the most benefit on those who are very low in vitamin C levels. So make sure that you consult with your dietary or uh, uh, health care provider, your medical doctor, uh, your health professional, your medical professional, whoever that is that knows about what you need for your body. You need to be consulting those people. A health practitioner, a nutritional uh, a coach, someone that knows because we don't want to just say, okay, I'll take this and this will be enough or this will be, no, we may be taking too much or we may be not taking enough. So my people, that concludes the water soluble vitamins. Again, I said this has been an awesome series. I am up to 23 minutes in this series right now and I'm concluding today. Go back, there is a series of the, on the in-depth study of the water soluble vitamins. As I said, eight of these water soluble vitamins come out your B complex group. And the other one, which makes up the nine, is your vitamin C. I did them all. There's a part one, a part two, part three, and today I am concluding part four. I hope this series has been very helpful, has given you all the knowledge and stuff that you can get started to learning more so that you can get the information that you need so you can start taking care of your health, taking care of your body, and providing yourself with the proper nutrition that you need. Like I said, you can get through supplementations and vitamins and things like that, but your best way to get your nutritious, healthy diet is through eating those proper, leaf the green vegetables and fruits, get it through eating the proper healthy foods. 
I conclude this and I'll see you guys at the next video, the next message, the next series, whatever that the creator may be bringing. Comment, 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 share, share, share. You're going to share your experiences. Share things that you may have gone through with some of these vitamins that you have. What do you know about the water sour vitamins? Are you experiencing some of these issues and things? Do you know more about that you can share with us? But I also recommend people, most important thing, you do your own research, your own study. Get out there and start searching because information is out there. It's flooded out there online. Then come always remember, go to the higher, greater power, the universe, the creator of this universe, because he knows all, because he put everything out there. It's out there in nature, people. He created a healthy, wholesome diet in Genesis chapter 1, verse 29. I am concluding this series, and I love you, beautiful souls, and I'm going to see you at the next video. Namaste, my lovely people. Thank you. Don't forget to share information. Share information, things that you may know, or things that you don't understand, or things that you need more uh, revelation on, or clarification. I'm here. I'm your doctor of philosophy. I'm your doctor of holistic health and nutrition. I can help you with that. Dr. Destiny is signing off. Tell see you all beautiful people again. Remember, there's a part one, a part two, a part three. And today I concluded with this part four. We got to go back and get all of those parts of those, this series of the in-depth in study of the World of Solid Balance to get it all. Namaste.